So we're going to lay out the 2,4-dimethoxybenzene. Um, weigh about, make sure you tear it. We're going to need 3 grams or as close to it as we can reasonably get. That's good enough. So there you go, you have your mass. And we should be good to go for the next part. All right, so we're gonna place our benzene in our 50 ml Erlenmeyer flask. Yep. Um, you can see in the back, I've got the sulfuric acid chilling. I'm going to add my glacial acetic acid, 10 mLs. And then I'm going to add my terbutanol. Give this a swirl. Trying to give it a swirl, get it to break up, and then we're going to cool it in the ice bath so we can add the sulfuric acid. Right, so I'm just going to keep swirling this until most of the solid, you know, I'm right there, most of the solid dissolves. So we want the solid to go away so that our 1,4-dimethoxybenzene uh, is actually in the solution. So it can so it can react. So we'll come back here in a second once it's all dissolved. You don't need to see me shake stuff for a few minutes. All right. So after dissolving the solid, I put the uh, glass that had our one four dimethoxy benzene into the ice bath and let that cool for a few minutes. And you see the sulfuric acid in the flask on the right. So now I'm going to add that sulfuric acid slowly uh, to the uh, dimethoxybenzene and swirl that for about 10 minutes, about five minutes for the addition and then 10 minutes and then an additional five minutes uh, after the addition is complete. We're just going to slowly add the sulfuric acid a few drops at a time. Let that swirl it a little bit. So you want to keep it in the ice bath because you want to keep the reaction itself cold. This reaction is exothermic, so the reaction is trying to heat up the solution. So we're using the ice bath to keep it cold.
And this is what it looks like after the first five minutes. And I'm just going to stir this off screen and we'll come back to when we add the ice to stop the reaction. So now we're going to quench this reaction um, by adding just a little bit of small bits of ice. You can see I've just got like a little handful here. And I'm just going to add it in the top. And we'll probably need this to warm up a little bit over time before we filter so that we don't end up with just clumps of ice in our beefner funnel. Okay, so I've scraped out all of that nice white solid from the Buechner funnel, from that vacuum filtration. And now we just want to make sure that there's no water whatsoever in our solid. It may look dry, but microscopically there's probably some water left over in here. It's not totally dry. So we'll test it now, right? So next direction say to dissolve your solid in some dichloromethane so that's what i have here in this graduated cylinder so i'll take my dichloromethane and just pour it in here to dissolve my solid and it dissolves pretty fast It's a little bit cloudy, which means maybe it's really saturated, or it could mean something else. So let me just add a little more to dissolve some of that solid. And you can see that it's still cloudy. So it's probably no longer an issue of saturation, but probably now an issue of having some residual water left over in that solid. So the way that we can fix that is by adding some drying agent. And so what we're gonna use is something that's gonna soak up that water. And for this experiment, we're gonna use sodium sulfate. You see it's anhydrous. So this sodium sulfate, once we add it, will stay solid, it won't dissolve. It'll just sit on the bottom. And what we're hoping to see is that eventually our solution clears up because that water, which is kind of making this solution a little bit biphasic, is going to um, be soaked up in that solid and just leave behind. Hey, who's taking my soul? <laughs> uh, leave behind just a nice um, dry solvent. So I needed to transfer the original 50 milliliters um, with the drying agent to a new beaker. I wanted to make sure that that cloudiness wasn't just saturation. In fact, I believe it is. Um, as long as your solution has been sitting over the drying agent for at least, I would say, you know, three to five minutes, then you can be assured that it's going to pull out any of that water. Typically, if it's still cloudy, if you add a little bit more sodium sulfate, it'll take care of that. But I've added a lot at this point. And so we still see that we've got a lot um, a, a cloudy solution still. But as you guys saw, we formed a lot of product. Um, but I don't want to add so much dichloromethane that it's going to take a while um, to boil off. Um, so I want to just go ahead and filter this sodium sulfate off into a new pre-weighed beaker. And so now that it's weighed, we're going to, just by gravity filtration, remove off the sodium sulfate that has done its job. Um, the solution will transfer to the beaker using just our glass funnel and a folded up piece of filter paper. Um, and we can then just um, move on to the recrystallization.
So now we have um, our solution that has been filtered away from the drying agent, that sodium sulfate. And now we're ready to recrystallize. So we're going to add this about 15 milliliters of methanol. And our product is not going to be soluble in methanol. Um, and so we're going to put this onto the hot plate. And we're going to recrystallize this. We're going to boil this solution until we've got about 15 milliliters left. And then we'll let this solution cool slowly by removing it from the hot plate to hopefully produce some nice crystals. All right, so we have our nice white shiny crystals and um, I've teared the wave out already. So this is just simply the mass of the product.